So I'm Shoichan from the University of Tokyo, Japan. I'd like to be a chairman today. So before the session starts, I want to introduce my, myself briefly. I stayed hard at love as a visiting researcher for about six months in 2012. At the time, I discussed with Harry about the Martin transformation and the crystal crystallography of the Martin site. So the knowledge will, uh, is uh, is the foundation of my current research. So I really appreciate so Harry. Today we have three talks. So the first one is presented by Professor Jaren Yang from National Taiwan University. Thank you, thank you, Chairman Professor Lambu. Uh, it's my great pleasure uh, and honor to give a talk on this occasion. And this photo uh, was taken uh, in the in uh, 1987. And I I remember Alaska arranged Eden Lady photo Photoshop to take this photo. So it's really fantastic. And it is it also gave me a very nice memorization so so that I I always uh, uh thinking about our old friend, especially Shahid and Adi. Okay, uh, this is my topic of dissertation. And when I uh, came to Cambridge, Harry told me uh, we, should, we should study more complicated structure. Of course, I think the, the wear metal is, is, a very, is a very good subject. And at that time, Harry uh, designed a uh, well metal for for Trident's uh, for Trident submarine program uh, in ESA. So it is really my pleasure and honor to to study this uh, this high strength well metal. And through the calculation TTT calculation, we know we confirm. This eight, uh, this nine well metal is is uh, is with very good Banner Harden ability. So it's very easy to have so called SQL Freeride. So, in fact, uh, my research topic is for SQL Freeride. But, and by the way, also, we I should learn the knowledge uh, about the Banner. And in fact, uh, at that time, I study uh, many, many uh, structure, because when we study wear metal, and we of course we should know a lot of morphiferite, idiomorphiferite, and so on. This T and micrograph montage, uh, you you uh, you can see in my dissertation, and it's really beautiful to show the interlocking structure, and the microphases is located. In the interlocking area, and this is my college. Because of Harry, I have opportunity uh, to enter Trinity College, so I really appreciate. Okay, uh, the chairman has introduced me a lot, but here I would like to emphasize because uh, I have been assigned uh, uh, a president of Microsoft of of. of of Taiwan, so I I, I have done lots of work uh, on the TM, and all my students uh, has done lots of TM work for cryptography and material defect, and we focus on steel, basically, and some of alloy we also study. For example, uh, high entropy alloy and aluminum alloy as well. Okay, uh, welcome Harry to visit. Uh, NTU again, and I think Harry will remember this palm tree. It's, it's the first avenue in, in NTU, and this is a bird view. You can see the palm tree avenue. And this is my department building, and this is a library building. And this is my research group, and this is, uh, it just show you uh, we analyze the diffraction pattern through the TM. And uh, if you visit my department, you will see uh, we have lots of TM. Here, I show you the six TM, six set of TM. And 
in fact, uh, two of them are established. I established the first film Mish Gang uh, in Taiwan in 2000. This one is Philips FEI Tecma F30. And 2009, I established second one, FEI Tecma G2 F20. Okay, later on, I will show you uh, the microsaturation. So here, I uh, just, just quickly show you from the micrometer scale to nanometer scale to uh, sub, sub nanometer scale and up to atomic scale. So by carefully sample preparation, we can, we can see the beautiful atomic arrangement for the presentation. Okay, uh, then we study the structure and property relationship we always consider the classification of microstructure on based on the morphology, but but that that's not enough because we should we should uh, insight into the detail substructure. So therefore, uh, it is important to explore the narrow size and atomic arrangement structure in some structure. So in this talk, uh, I will highlight some of the case study to to share you the interesting uh, aspect of the steel. And also I will give some example about aluminum alloy and high entropy alloy. Okay, in my first talk, basically I, uh, I would like to show you the example in steels. So uh, you will see massive ferrite and interpenetrating twin of less Martin size and interface presentation narrow size carbide. Okay, here is a typical massive ferrite structure. And uh, in fact, when we, uh, when we study uh, interstitial free steel and by uh, low heat input welding condition, we can produce this typical massive ferrite structure. And my student has done that in 1997. And at that time we found the structure with the higher hardness and with a quite peculiar ragged count too. And we suppose it's a massive ferrite. And we would like to produce by dilatometer before, before I, I introduce to you the detail of the, the substructure of massive ferrite, I also would like to uh, show you a lot of my ferrite, the amorphic ferrite and SPL ferrite. Okay, this beautiful structure is, is my first time to see in Cambridge. And this photo, uh, Sunia, he's a senior classmate and he, he gave me this, this photo and I appreciate. And also I produced the electromagnetic ferrite by myself here. Yeah. And through the large Austin grain in the, in the plain carbon steel, we can have this electromagnetic ferrite. On the other hand, for the plain carbon steel, if we, if we use small prior Austin grain size as an initial uh, structure, we can produce this equiasis electromagnetic ferrite. So some people uh, couldn't understand the meaning for electromagnetic ferrite because the people always see this type of structure. And also Sunia gave me this photo, very, very beautiful photo. And I also produced this photo in my lab. We use vanadium. We use vanadium cup containing steel and you will through this heat treatment, and we can have a lot of morphic ferrite and idiomorphic ferrite. And this is SEM photo to show uh, the inclusion inside the electromorphic ferrite, idiomorphic ferrite, and the index analysis uh, to determine the chemical composition of the inclusion. And it's, it's magnetic sulfide. But in fact, 
they still contain high level of vanadium. So we we suppose the vanadium carbide play an important role for for this idiomorphic ferrite. But we need we need further investigation. Okay, uh, this also my work, and I would like to show you SQL ferrite, beautiful SQL ferrite. We can uh, through Harry's uh, beautiful design. We, we can have high volume pressure of SQL ferrite. And this is TEM to show you SQL ferrite. And you can see in the well, in the well pool, in fact, uh, after, after solidification, uh, we have inclusion and there is no one-to-one -one relationship for one inclusion and one SQL ferrite because, uh, because more of SQL ferrite through so-called simple setting irrigation. So you will see this morphology. Okay, let's go back to massive flavor. We try to use dilatometer to produce a massive flavor. And we consider, I suppose the cooling rate is quite important because uh, from the laser well, we estimate the cooling rate should, should, should be higher than 100 degrees per second. But here we use this fantastic a uh, dilatometer, we can we can have a high speed cooling rate. So uh, here we design three oxidation temperature, and keep these three temperature respectively for three minutes, and then rapid cool by five hundred degrees C per second. So we will see the grain size effect for massive ferro transformation. So through the uh, cooling curve, we can determine the transformation start temperature because, because the latent heat, we, we will see the cooling rate rapid decrease, the cooling rate rapid decrease. So that the first transformation temperature we can determine for the small grain size austenization at 1000 degrees C, we have 755 degrees C start temperature. And for this coarse grain, we will have a lower transformation temperature, and this is media one. Okay, let's look at the optical microscope. You will see for the small grain size, we can have a fully, uh, fully massive ferrite structure, and this is hardness. And for the eleven, for the eleven hundred degrees C oxidation sample, we can have this volume impression of massive ferrite. And this area is for massive ferrite, this area for money side. But in fact, it's very difficult to determine. We also, uh, through hardness, to try to analyze the, uh, to categorize the structure. And this is a large austenite grain size condition, 1200 degrees C oxidation sample. And we have the volume pressure of massive ferrite is, is much lower. So I suppose the nucleation size is quite important for the small oxygen grain size. We have lots of nucleation size for, for this uh, massive ferrite transformation. And this area we suppose, we suppose is a uh, massive ferrite. And this area is something like a band line or mining side. Okay, let's go back to the massive ferrite structure. We can see the ragged, the ragged morphology, and it's quite peculiar. So I would like to raise my first question here. So why the morphology become patch-like? I, I suppose the rapid growth of high energy incoherent boundary is quite important. So so we can have this patch-like uh, morphology, and on the other hand. Uh, we can see high dislocation density within the massive ferrite, and we calculate the dislocation density. And the density about uh, 10 to the power of 14 per, per meter square. And this another result also show the same. And we sub, we should understand why this diffusional transformation product possess higher dislocation density as compared to allotomorphic ferrite. I think the reason is quite simple. 
because uh, when FCC transform to BCC, and we consider the volume change, we are we are bring we are we are raise up the trend at the interface, of course. However, for the slow cooling rate, the electromagnetic field right can accommodate can accommodate the strand at the grand boundary. For the massive free ride, this strand couldn't accommodate a grand boundary. So the strand retain in the matrix and become high dense dislocation. Okay, let's go to Martin side. Typically in, uh, in the ferrous Martin side, uh, steel Martin side, we can see these three types. However, when we look at the substructure, basically I, I am very interested in, in this lenticular Martin side. So let's let's go to same Martin side first. Here you can see uniformly spaced twin, just twin. However, when we look at the lenticular Martin side, we can see three region, middle region twin, and Extended region, extended uh, twin region, and untwinned region. So the transformation mechanism we should consider. We suppose the twinning more first, and then sleep more later for the Martin side, for this type of Martin side. This is dark field for the lenticular Martin side. And I think lots of people study less Martin side for low carbon steel for, or low alloy steel, but there's a peculiar structure occur. This peculiar structure, I think, uh, if, you, uh, if you look at Harry's dissertation, you will see it's so-called interpenetrating twin. And in fact, a lot of, uh, lots of automobile product uh, company ask me, uh, why Bolong steel possess this interpenetrant twin? Is it twin Martin side? So I would like to give, give the answer here. Because it's less Martin side, and I suppose uh, we always can uh, suppose it's possess Kuchimosa orientation. And in Kuchimosa orientation, uh, the Austin happy plan 111, they are four, they are four groups. So when we study just group one, we will see the twinning pair. There are three twinning pair, V1, V2, and V3, V4, and V5, V6. So we can find 12 twinning pair in this Kuchimosa orientation. Here, I would like to give you another example for standard steel. In this standard steel, we also can find our interpenetrant twin here. So when we hit the sample at 1040 degrees C for three minutes and cool by the, this green way, 10 degrees C per second, we can see this structure. And through the dark field, we can confirm the twin interpenetrating each other and across the Martin side unit. And from the deflation pattern, we can convert. It's a twin structure. So uh, this interpenetrant twin uh, looks so peculiar for for the automobile uh, uh, people because they would like to produce A B pillar and B pillar, and they hesitate whether this this twin model is like will bring will bring about the brittle. So they consider they are they are really serious. serious about this problem. And my answer is this type of sub micro twin is not intrinsic transformation feature of twin Martin side. In fact, it's, it's due to high degree mutual compensating accommodation. So it's default, it's, it's due to uh, release the, the strength, invariant prime strength. So from this structure, Okay, I would like to use this cartoon animation to show you the post 
to show to illustrate the pro the training process. Okay, I would like to repeat again. Okay, sorry, I go back. I think you can you can find this information in Harry's dissertation. So I learned from Harry, and I showed the people it. This type of structure is not twin Martin size. In fact, it's less Martin size. It's a it's due to accommodation. Okay, my time is quite limited, so I would like to go quickly to interface presentation carbide. I think this interface presentation carbide is so important because it is increased the strength, and also by the way, it increased. It also can keep excellent formability, so we like it. However, the problem is we should know the summability of the carbide. So we should find a good solution for the carbide. And I think titanium moly is, a, is, a best, is the best one, in my opinion. Uh, interface presentation has been, uh, this phenomena has been, has been discovered by Professor Honeycomb in 1976, and he proposed this model. The terrace plan between Freeride and Austin line, the carbide form on the terrace plan. And then Freeride grows by the movement of the mobile step plan. We use this simple alloy, low carbon and 1.5 magnets and 0.1 titanium and 0.2 moly try to uh, study the interface present carbide here. So after, whole, after, after our standardization at this temperature for three minutes and cool to 720 to 630 degrees C, we choose five temperature uh, for 30 minutes and cool. So we try to uh, understand the isosomal temp transformation temperature effect. Here we, we see the optical microstructure. And by the way, we can we concern about the hardness of, of the car or the uh, ferrite because we suppose the car the interface presentation carbide form within this ferrite. So from the hardness you will see at higher temperature, we have lower hardness. And at lower temperature, we have higher hardness. And it's quite significant. So basically, uh, we suppose the carbide particle density and the carbide size is extremely important. So at lower temperature, we have higher carbide particle density, and also we have small size carbide. Okay, here is the evidence to show you. We can see at lower temperature, we have a higher carbide density. And also we have a small carbide size. Okay, uh, through this concept, we try to produce interface carbide strength dual phase steel. And we, we, we do that. So here we, we have a counterpart. This steel without without titanium, and this steel with with titanium. And you will see, uh, we design the ferrite with the nearly the same size, and the multi side also have the also multi side with the nearly the same same volume fraction. And you will see the cut. We will see the titanium bearing steel with high yield strength high UTS, and how about the elongation? Elongation nearly the same as compared to titanium free one. So I think it's a it's an advantage uh, to produce th this interface station dual phase steel. And this structure show you the ferrite and martin side. We here, we show you the martin side. Uh, in fact, in dual phase steel, we always see two martin side at the interface between ferrite and martin side because carbon rich area. However, uh, for this, this titanium continuous steel, you will see just less martin side. So 
So we, we cannot see twin Martin sign. And for the ferrite region, you can see interfestation occur. And we call this region trans ferrite region because of the carbide. And we call this region the weakened Martin sign. And we, we, can, we can understand because no twin Martin sign occur at uh, near the uh, interface boundary. So I suppose the interface relation is quite important also for dual phase steel application. Okay, uh, let's go to, because my time is quite limited. So I would like to show you the deformation twin structure in FCC high entropy alloy. We, we focus on high strength deformation at cryo, cryogenic temperature in order to create deformation twin in uh, this five component uh, FCC high entropy alloy, ion, cobalt, nickel, chromium, and manganese. And the chemical composition is here in atomic percent. And we, uh, we do, we uh, co-row the sample by 70% co-row and then heat treat it at different temperature and which choose two temperature. One is higher, 1100 and the other one is 800. So we call this sample LG sample, large grain sample. And we call this sample small G sample. We use a uh, high speed, high speed uh, trans transform uh, deformation uh, facility. This is so called speed Hawkinson bar, and the, the strain rate can reach time nine times ten to the power three per second. So you will, you will see the beautiful twin structure. After coral, we add near at eleven 1, hundred and 800, very, very beautiful twin structure. However, I would like to tell you, we also can see little anemian twin. I will show you later on. So uh, here we, we measure the uh, size distribution. We can see by model distribution because some, some areas is quite small. The grain size is so small. So, when we, when we study a linear twin, I suppose many, many people cannot observe the so-called a linear nano twin, but we found, we already found. So the size is so tiny. You see 320 nanometer and 85, 85 nanometer. And also we can see much smaller one, 22 nanometer. We call this a linear nano twin. So after high-speed deformation, we would like to observe the deformation in detail. And let's look at this first. You will see uh, two variants of, of twin, deformation twin intersect and to form this close block. So we suppose it causes hardening. So we, it's, it's a, maybe it's a dynamic strength hard dynamic grain, grain refine effect in this alloy. And also we can see in such final anemian twin, we can, we can find out much smaller twin, deformation twin. So the anemian twin size is, is less than 10, around 10 nanometer, you see. However, even in this uh, small size anemian twin, we can, we can have the deformation twin. So we use high resolution TEM to observe this uh, deformation nano twin. And the size is about one to two nanometer. So I suppose this high entropy FCC alloy has a very good advantage using a cryo temperature. Okay, my last, Case study, I would like to talk about the atomic structure investigation uh, in aluminum alloy. Thanks to 
uh, Professor Jango Nin. He initiated a collaborate research work uh, six years ago. So we have we have a good opportunity to study aluminum alloy. Because uh, Professor Jango Nin, uh, he is an expert on the aerospace uh, wind forming te technology. So uh, he asked he asked me to check the microstructure for him. So we investigated the GP zone and ETA prime and ETA. His sample is 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 uh, is through a technology called creep aging forming. So after solution treatment, uh, two step aging treatment, and then uh, the sample treat by creep aging forming. So by using tensor test, the sample uh, is uh, is heated at one one hundred and sixty five degrees C and hold it for eight hour and applies constant stress about uh, one hundred uh, sixty two point five megapascal and this stress is below your stress. Okay, I just show you the uh, the schematic diagram for the ETA from because when we observe the atom, this type, when we observe uh, this type alloy, and we always consider how to distinguish ETA from an ETA. So we first we 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 should know they they are four variants of ETA from, and this is orientation relationship. So when we observe ETA from, and I think the choose choose zone S is quite essential because uh, this four variant is formed on the 111 plane. And they are, and they, this four variant is symmetrical. So when we choose 111, 111 zone S, two variant is in H configuration. So we can, we can measure the thickness of this uh, presentation and the other two we can we cannot measure the thickness. The other orientation, the other phase is eta phase. There are lots of eta phase. Uh, from the literature review, we uh, we can uh, we can list more than thirteen. We can list more than thirteen type of eta. And the orientation, in fact, the orientation is is a, is different from from the eta prime except this ETA2. So people suppose ETA2 is quite popular form through sympathetic mutation from ETA prime to ETA2. And we have published the sympathetic, we have published the sympathetic nucleation. Uh, sorry, we have published the in situ nucleation for this ETA phase. Um, if you are interested, you can refer this uh, this paper. Because uh, this orientation is quite complicated. So uh, when we investigate, and also the, the plate is so tiny, so the orientation is difficult to determine. So we use FFT to determine the orientation relationship. And we can determine eta and eta prime. So from the chronography, we understand the difference, the structure factor, and we uh, basically we we uh, we focus this term, and we can identify uh, the eta prime from eta two. Eta two is a type of eta. We can uh, distinguish eta prime and eta. Eta two is a, a type of eta. For the detail, please refer to this. Uh, this paper. Okay, uh, our problem is uh, we would like to see the atomic arrangement. So we, we don't like more reference. We like atomic resolution. So how can we do that? We should prepare a good sample. So under the support uh, from Fishon, CEO Paul and Risha, they, they provide nanometer for TM preparation. And we can remove the, 
the upper layer and lower layer are the main. So we can see the detailed atomic arrangement now. And my, stu my student, Tai Fu Zhong, he, uh, he has done a beautiful work to remove the upper layer and lower layer of the matrix. So we can focus on the presentation. Uh, that's our result. And you can see the detail in, in our paper we published in 2019. Okay, from this tiny uh, pre-state, in fact, we, 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 we find lots of information. The best information is that we find lots of defects. Here is a, is a Brayton uh, elongated hexagonal type uh, defect. In fact, it's a zinc deprived region. And here is an example to show you staking form. We can see the ZZ regulation was disrupted here. And also we can see um, many, many, many threatened hexagon unit joined together, very peculiar. And here we can see many, many defects. I think this type, of, this type of defect is too complicated, but we can image because the dislocation, because the creep agent forming the, the interaction between the dislocation and this pre-state and form many, many defects. Here, I'll just show you several examples. We can see many, many defects. And also we can see five four here is a pendulous uh, tilting structure. We, we, we really feel very, very interesting in this in, in this pre-state. Okay, uh, because the eta phase possess so many, many types and the orientation are, are quite strange compared to the eta prime. So we suppose perhaps, perhaps due to the defect within, within this pre-state. So, so this tiny, uh, this tiny pre-state possess completed, possess different orientation each other. Next year, we will, uh, I will install Spectrum 300 and the resolution we are, we are up to 0 0.48 and so on. Also, we can analyze the chemical chemical index, uh, atomic, atomic uh, sorry, we can analyze the atomic uh, distribution from, from their uh, index spectrum. It's so-called atomic index. And at that time, we can, uh, we can clearly show you the detailed atomic arrangement because uh, nowadays we just use the contrast. Okay, I think my time is quite limited and I really thank for to Harry for his inspiration. And this is first, first time Harry visited Taiwan and that's my university campus. And I remember this year is 2004. 47 years ago. And this is my young son. And this is my wife. And this is in the hotel lobby. We will purchase space on 300. And we, we will establish next year. And I, I, I hope Harry can come to Taiwan and to, to give me some idea for microsocialization. And I also would like to bring uh, Jing Hua Yang, Professor Jing Hua Yang, uh, best wish to Harry, and he wish Harry can visit Taiwan again. And he also highlight the first pa first paper he published with Harry in 1994. Uh, thanks to Jing Hua Yang, we have an opportunity to to have uh, to have a uh, privilege to assess 101 floor of the 101 tower. And this photo uh, 
uh, Harry, uh, Harry was taken uh, outside the Wang Wan Tower. At that time, uh, the Wang Wan Tower hasn't come British as yet. And we, uh, because uh, Jinghua Yang student, he was in charge of, of the construction so that we have uh, a, special, <laughs> a, a special privilege to, to assess the top of the 101. You can see the label for 101 Pro. And this is shown and Professor Chen and me here. And you see the damper here without decoration. And here, if you visit 101, you will see the golden decoration looks very, very beautiful. And I, we are also very thankful uh, to Harry for, for he used this, this photo on the, on the uh, for, for this book front page. It's really wonderful. Okay, uh, I would like to say we are really thankful to Harry uh, for his amazing inspiration amazing knowledge and amazing generosity and amazing goodwill. You see my daughter, Alice, she feels so happy and she is looking forward to, to seeing Harry again. Okay, welcome Harry to visit Taipei again. Thank you, yeah. And welcome, yeah. Welcome yeah. Harry to visit Taipei again uh, for uh, for a period of stay for maybe one, one week or two weeks. Okay, that's my, my talk. Okay, thank you very much for your nice talk. So there are many good photos in DM. So a uh, few minutes to the uh, questions. So we have a question in chat. So Professor Ichikawa uh, sent the uh, question. So. Uh, what is the nucleation site of your massive ferrite? Can you expect intragranular massive ferrite nucleated on inclusions like Ashkira ferrite? Mm, in fact, in, interfree steel is much more clean. We, we don't expect it inclusion there. Although it's possible to become a nucleation site, but I, we, we consider the possibility because inter, so it's interstitial free, free steel with contain very few uh, inclusion. So I suppose most of the, most of the nucleation site uh, original from, from the grain boundary, prior Austin grain boundary. So if the, if the, grain, uh, if the Austin grain size is small, then there are lots of possibility to nucleate. Um, massive ferrite. So, so okay. I so, haven't I haven't seen the evidence. Uh, massive ferrite grows from from inclusion. I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also one more question. So, uh, Jiang Ling, So please. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, th thank you, Professor Yang, and uh, it's a very nice talk. And uh, uh, also remember the. The, the uh, 30 years ago or 40 years ago pictures and uh, we were young at Cambridge and uh, that was nice. Uh, and I have got questions and uh, because I work on metaforming and uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, we look for the deformation at high temperatures, especially in, uh, in ferrite, uh, uh, sorry, in austenite conditions. And uh, I have seen you, you have got uh, slides to show the dislocation densities. Uh, I yes. believe that might be at room temperature. And I wonder uh, if possible, you can look at this dislocation densities at uh, hot deformation conditions. Uh, in situ, uh, any, any work on the, uh, to, to when we deform the material, in the meantime, we can look at the dislocation density changes uh, at high temperatures. Is that possible or not now, nowadays? Uh, I think it's possible by using in situ TM. Uh-huh, in situ TM, okay. 
to 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 because at, at high temperature the dislocation will be anneal. So uh, the density will decrease. Uh-huh. But so during the it, deformation, probably uh, dislocation think, density would increase. But uh, if uh, depend on deformation strain rates, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So basically, oh. I think it's very difficult to do in situ experiment. Mm -hmm. It's very, very difficult. Okay. And also, we can see that the state for energy. Mm -hmm. Because. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We okay, also sorry. can see that. Uh -huh. but, but some people also study in situ TEM to find out the, the, the high temperature behavior, the deformation mm -hmm. at high temperature. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lin.